In the first part of this problem, uh, we walk 73.2 meters at a speed of 1.22 meters per second. And then we run 73.2 meters at a speed of 3.05 meters per second. And we're moving along a straight track here. Now we are asked to find the average velocity in this case, or at least that is what we have to do for part A of this problem. Now the formula for average velocity is equal to the total distance moved over, or the total displacement being moved in a period of time, divided by that period of time. However, for the situation we're given, uh, we, are given we aren't given the time at all, at least not the total time, and we are given uh, different speeds for different segments of this person's motion. So what are you supposed to do here? So as you can see, I have broken up the variables we've been given into different segments. So I've said that d sub 1 and v sub 1 are the distance and speed that represent the runner's motion uh, during the first part of the problem as he's just walking. And then d sub 2 and v sub 2 I've used to represent the second segment of the runner's motion when he starts speeding up. So because the D here represents the total motion over the period of time over which we're trying to find the average speed, then we can say that our total distance, or the D we want in the numerator of this uh, uh, formula here, is going to be D sub 1 plus D sub 2. However, in order to find the time, we still want to find the time for each segment. So we want to find what t sub 1 is, the time for the first part when he's walking, and t sub 2, uh, the time for the second part when they're running. And how will we find this? Well, this is another case where we'll want to make use of our uh, speed formula. So again, the velocity formula is equal to a distance over a period of time. Now we want to find time. We want to find time for each segment of the motion. So let's, let's multiply both sides of this formula by time, and then divide both sides by velocity so that we have time isolated on its own. And the result we get is a formula telling us that time is equal to the distance traveled divided by the speed, assuming that the speed is constant in that case. Now we have uh, what we'll need to evaluate this, this uh, equation here, because d1 plus d2 is just going to be uh, the two distances we were already given, so 73.2 meters plus 73.2 meters again. And the time components will now be just uh, this being divided, the distance divided by the speed for each segment of the runner's motion. So for T1, we would put uh, essentially D sub 1 divided by D sub 2. So uh, 73.2 meters divided by uh, 1.22 meters per second. And, the, and, in the, and in the denominator, in the same denominator, we are going to add uh, the d sub 2 divided by v sub 2 so that we can get the time for the second segment of the motion. So that'll be 73.2 meters divided by 3.05 meters per second. And now, if we were to plug this entire thing into our calculator, we find that the average speed is equal to 1.74 meters per second. And that is our answer for part A. We still have another part of the problem to do, however. In the second part of the problem, once again, we're given information about uh, two segments of a person's running motion. Except in this case, uh, we are given the time for both segments. We are not given the distance for both segments. Uh, so we know that we are walking for one minute at a speed of 1.22 meters per second. And then we run for one minute at a speed of 3.05 meters per second. And uh, I have written little primes next to all the variables to emphasize that these are not the same variables we worked with in uh, part A though it probably doesn't matter too much. So now we'll want to use a similar process because we'll once again want to use the formula that the average velocity is going to be equal to the distance traveled divided by the time elapsed. 
Now in this case, the distance traveled is going to be the part that we will have to figure out for each segment of the motion. So once again, consulting our speed formula, I'll write a smaller form of it up here. If we want to get uh, distance, or d on its own, then we'll just multiply both sides by t. And we'll cancel out, and we'll end up with d on its own. And we can see now that the distance traveled is equal to the speed times the time. So for our formula here, we'll want to uh, perform this calculation for each uh, segment, each part of the runner's motion. And here I have plugged all those values in. Uh, so for the first part of the distance, I multiplied a 1.22 meters per second by one minute, except uh, I changed the minutes into seconds, and one minute has 60 seconds. And I did that so that the units would cancel out more evenly, because we are given the speed in terms of meter per second, and we'll want those units to cancel out on the numerator if we're looking for an answer in terms of speed. And in the bottom, I added the times together, which is just 60 seconds plus 60 seconds, or 120 seconds. And now if we plug this into our calculator, or work out this math using your method of choice, we find that the average speed in this case is 2.14 meters per second. In part C, the final part of the problem, we are asked to graph uh, the change in position versus time uh, for both cases and in some way indicate how the average velocity would be found from such a graph. And here are the two graphs. Uh, the first one representing part A and the second one representing the situation in part B. The solid lines represent the actual motion uh, so the first solid line segment here, uh, when it's less steep, represents when we're walking. And because we're walking at a speed of uh, 1.22 meters per second, uh, that's the slope of this, of this first segment, 1.22. And then it switches to a slope of 3.05 for when we are speeding up, when we're running. And the main difference between these two graphs is that during the second segment when we're running, in part B, uh, we are running for a longer period of time, as you can see from uh, the time values added onto the t-axis here. Also, the average velocity is being represented by this little dashed line going from the origin straight into the top point when our motion ends. And the slope of this dashed line is effectively what we have been calculating in the previous two parts of the problem.